Hello, and welcome to the We're Not Stump podcast. I'm your host, Mike Boland, and I'm a congenital amputee of the right hand. In this show, I will interview other amputees and allow them to tell you their incredible life stories. I'll also feature family members of amputees and others who support the amputee community, all in an effort to discuss the challenges and triumphs of those living with limb loss. So stick around and listen to inspirational stories and find out why we say we're not stumped. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the We're Not Stumped podcast. I'm your host, Mike Bolin, and today I'm going it alone. This is the season two finale, and I'm going to do it single-handedly. Yes, just by myself. Going to have a lot of fun. The first thing I want to do is thank all the guests, whether it be from season one or season two, and certainly I got some in the hopper for season three that I'm very excited about already. So thank you to all the guests. Your insights have been fantastic. And what you are sharing is helping many other people. So thank you. Number two, I want to thank the listeners. I didn't know what I was getting into about a year and a half ago when I had this concept and really kind of put it into practice about a year ago. I didn't know what I was getting into as far as a podcast was concerned. But it has grown now every month. And some months, this month in particular, it's really skyrocketed. That's why I want to thank the listeners. You really mean a lot to me. I appreciate it. And if you ever ever have any suggestions for the show, I'd like to hear about it. A uh, couple things, too. I have to have handy notes here. Handy. I'm saying handy, but, you know, got to do that. A uh, couple things about the show. Since it did start to, to grow quite a bit, I built a website around it. It's we'renotstumped.com. When I first started the podcast, I wasn't sure how big it was going to get or what I needed to do to really support it. Now, I'm a web developer by trade, so I've been doing websites for quite a while. So there's really no excuse for me not to do a website from the get-go on this one. I'll blame myself. But what I did is I, I used a subdomain, we're not stumped, podcast.we'renotstumped.com, and that was originally like a landing page for the, for the website, for the podcast. Now it's a fully developed website. Uh, let's face it. I mean, it's a podcast website. It's not meant to stay there long. It's meant to everyone to look at the episodes and go to either uh, videos or the actual audio. And that's what it's doing what it's designed for. So it's not an extravagant website, but it's there and it's there for you. And it has a couple different things on there that I incorporated. Number one, a general contact form. If anyone wants to contact me through that website, just go to contact us. Very easy very easy to do. If you're ready to jump on a call with me though, I also have a booking area on that site. And what that booking area will do, it'll take you through the steps to create a calendar invite for the We're Not Stum podcast and send us both a Zoom link so we can talk to each other. And if you're not ready to, for me to push record for lack of a better term and you just want to talk to me, just use that form. I'd love to hear from you. But again, thank you so much for all the listeners and of course all the guests, and I look forward to doing this podcast for quite a long time. Now I do have three topics that I wanna talk about, and they're gonna pop up like right here. Number one, I wanna talk about prosthetics. What I've sensed over the last year of talking to a lot of amputees is the personal choice that a prosthetic is for an individual. I'm going to get into that a lot more when I delve into that topic in a minute, but I do want to talk about prosthetics. Number two, I want to talk about amputee workouts. I want to dedicate a whole episode, or episodes, plural, to workouts for amputees. There are a lot of people that do a lot of great exercises on there, but the thing that struck me was, in a very recent outing, there was someone just like me who didn't know how to exercise and here I've been doing it for quite a while using things that I had built. So I want to get into that. I want to talk about that a little bit more in depth in just a second. And number three, just a general call out to guests. If you've been listening for a while and you've been on the sidelines wondering whether being on a podcast is the right thing for you, I hope you decide that it is because this podcast again is for our community and it's not It's not about me, it's about you. And I wanna hear these stories. A lot of people need to hear these stories. 
And if you read any of the descriptions and really what I am encompassing in the podcast, number one, it's about amputees and their stories. Number two, prosthetists. I love having the companies on to talk about their their skills and what they see. And number three, family members. And if I've really lacked in any area, it's the family members. I'd love to have some family members of amputees on, including my own. I mean, you think, right? You know, I got the whole setup here. I haven't even had my own on, but I haven't yet, and I will rectify that. So let's get into topic number one as far as prosthetics. You'll see a lot of the time during my podcast, if you watch on YouTube, we're not stumped on YouTube, that I point to my prosthetic a lot. Now, that prosthetic, I last used that in eighth grade. Uh, It broke because I was being a little rough house with it. It is what it is. My parents asked me if I wanted to have another prosthetic. And at that point, I said no. Because I was really on and off with the prosthetics at that point, probably more off than on. And it was at that point I just decided, this is the way I want to go in life. And again, that's my decision. With that said, I will say that I believe in prosthetics 100%. And I'm for people using prosthetics. You can hear my dog walking a little bit. His name is Louie. If I can get him on, if I can get him on the air, I, I will. But anyway, I am very much a believer, believer in prosthetics, and I know they help quite a bit of people. But at the end of the day, like anything else, they are a choice. And I'm starting to see, and I think it's just something I'm starting to see, and I'm not going to say it's just starting. I'm starting to see a little bit of shaming, if, if that's the right term. For people that choose not to wear prosthetics. And I also see companies that make prosthetics turn a blind eye to the entire community of amputees and not, and just completely think, this is a business for me. I don't care about amputees. I care about the bottom line. And I don't think that's fair. I, I really think that if we're a community, we should be a community and we should in- incorporate everyone in the amputee community, including those that don't wear prosthetics. And I'll give you a uh, a little bit of an example, if you don't mind. There's a company called Aether Biomedical, and they pretty much target upper limb. As a matter of fact, they do. That's what they do, upper, upper limb amputees. They have something called the Zeus Hand. Probably a great product. I don't need it. You know, that that's not something I need. Something a lot of people need, though. So I'll I'll say that. I'm not saying it's a bad product. I'm also not endorsing it. But I don't like the tone of of how they go to market for their product. And I'm going to read exactly a post that I saw on LinkedIn that happened to be also repeated on Facebook. And then give you a little idea of how I responded. But to give you an idea of the, the little, little bit tone deaf and how they went to market just selling their product. Their, their post on LinkedIn, and you can see the post on LinkedIn, you can see my response to them on LinkedIn. Upper limb amputees like, I'm gonna redact the name because that's not fair to the person who they are actually talking about, that's not fair. Upper limb amputees like X who use prosthetic hands. See, upper limb amputees who use prosthetic hands inspire others with their determination to overcome adversity. I'm reading off another monitor here. Upper limb amputees like X who use prosthetic hands. I have a little issue with that. I, I'd like to think that upper amputees who do not wear prosthetic also may inspire others with their determination and their willingness to overcome adversity. That was extremely poorly written. You guys, you got to do better than that. We're not a pawn for you. Upper amputees are not just, we're not a pawn. We're real people, real people like me. And I don't appreciate that tone of voice. That is terribly worded, that was terribly worded. So my response, which you can see on LinkedIn was, as an upper amputee myself, I follow, I follow the amputee hashtag, and this post came up in my feed. 
From my perspective, I feel this post is oddly written. That's how I wrote it. I wasn't going to attack anybody. I don't mean to attack anyone. I just want them to be aware. Then I said, in the spirit is the spirit behind this post that only upper amputees who use prosthetics inspiring to others? Because that's how it reads. Upper amputees like X who use prosthetic hands inspire others with their determination. <laughs> that's the way it reads. So I added a little bit more from my perspective. And one of the most bizarre responses I have ever seen, and it's on there, you can take a look. This is how they started their response, and this is why I really don't feel like engaging with that company, and um, for that reason, I cannot recommend this company because they seem to be tone deaf for the exact community, exact community that they claim to help. Thank you for sharing your perspective on our post, and we appreciate your engagement with the hashtag amputee. Wow, they appreciate an amputee person engaging with the hashtag, with the amputee hashtag. I can't think of a more condescending way to talk to an amputee. Um, I don't use these types of words lightly, but let's face it, we're a, we're a group. You can say X group. I, I don't consider myself anything less of a person. So some of these adjectives sometimes I don't feel comfortable using. But we are a community. And like any other community like ours that may have struggles from here or there, I would think that we're allowed, we don't need to be told we're appreciated to engage in a hashtag that is us. I can almost guarantee you, and I'd like to know this, whether the person on the other side of that response, that highly polished corporate response, not a personal response to me, are they an amputee? Are they an upper amputee? Do they know any amputees? Thank you for sharing your perspective on our post and we appreciate your engagement with the hashtag amputee. Well, I appreciate your appreciation. That makes no sense. I can, that's, that's 100% tone deaf. Another thing they said when I questioned the whole amputee and upper amputees who use prosthetics. Here's what they said verbatim. We have always respected and admired amputees without prosthetic limbs. You know what? Don't bullshit. That, that, that's, that's again, that's very condescending. And here's how I know they don't really, those are words and not actions. Here's how you know this. Go to Aether Biomedical, Zeus Hand, look at all their posts. Look at it on social, look at it on LinkedIn, look at it on YouTube. There's not one picture, not one mention that I can find, and I did a lot of research. Doesn't mean I'm gonna spend the rest of my life looking at all their posts. But I dare anyone to find one upper limb amputee like me without a prosthetic. You will not find it. Words are cheap. Don't bullshit me. That's not fair. That's not fair to talk to me as a lifelong upper limb amputee like that. That's why I cannot recommend that company. They talk down to me. If they really wanted to talk, if they really wanted to engage in a conversation with me, I would have been happy to. But when they thank me to engage in a hashtag that, I, that represents me, and then say that they've always respected and admired amputees without prosthetic limbs when there's not one word, one mention, not one picture. No, that's not fair. And I cannot recommend that company. I don't, I, that screams, and this is Mike Boland's opinion, that screams we're in this for the money, not to help the community. That's the way I feel. So, with that said, I want to get... No, I'm going to stay on that topic for just a minute because this isn't just an upper amputee conversation. 
person that's been on my podcast a couple times, Jennifer J.J. Johnson, talking about this exact topic. Talked to her about it just yesterday, and I have her permission to talk about this today. And she'll be on another future episode. I think she was on episode four last year, and then a YouTube-only video. She is a bilateral leg, upper, upper leg amputee above the knee. She doesn't wear prosthetics. What she goes through is chair shaming, is what she said. The amputee community will chair shame her. What? She's one of the most inspirational people using eighth year, aether, biomedical, using their terms. She's one of the most inspirational people I have met. Her attitude, her smile, her knowledge is incredible. And it doesn't start or stop with a prosthetic. It starts and stops with her as the person. Chair shaming, that's terrible. And I'll say this, I've had, I've had other people on this podcast, both upper and lower, that have shared with me some of the shames, shaming and the bullying, I'll say it, that they get from people within this community. We have to be better than that. None of us know anyone else's story through and through. There are reasons why some people don't wear prosthetics. There are some reasons why people do wear prosthetics. This is not an anti-prosthetic rant. I believe in them. I started a nonprofit to aid in the cost for people. But what I don't like is to get peer pressured and bullied into having to wear them. And I don't like companies that want to bullshit an amputee and say they care about the whole community when they're not, when they're talking the talk but not walking the walk. And you want to know how I feel good about what I do, even though I don't wear a prosthetic and I just had that rant? I've had five or six prosthetic companies on this podcast and I don't even wear them. But I've had them on because that's part of the whole story. It isn't about the bottom line all the time. If you're in this industry, you better care about amputees. Amputees, all amputees. Don't just throw a line out there on LinkedIn and say, we have always respected and admired amputees without prosthetic limbs, when there's nothing, nothing to show you have. Don't do it. Be better. Or get out. Go, go invent something else. We don't need you. Okay, now I'm going to be done with that one. Let's go on to some better topics. A little less passionate. I shouldn't say I'm very passionate about everything. I talked about the amputee workouts. And I, I talked a little bit earlier about why I wanted to talk about it. And I'll go into that a little bit more. There was a, an amputee, again, just like me. Except she was missing the... Uh, she's missing a left hand instead of a right hand. And she went to some event where... She learned how to do some exercises, um, great, which was great. But she, her thing was, boy, I didn't know I could do these exercises. And I, the way my mind works was, I wouldn't think anybody wouldn't know these things. So bad on me, I could have asked her myself. I mean, I, I do know her well enough. I could have asked her, hey, did you work out? You need money tips, whatever. But that's why I wanna have some podcasts directly associated with this. How do you do it? How do I do it? You know, I, I, make, I make some things out of PVC. I use rope and straps and, you know, I, I use a lot of different things. You know, push-ups, I'll just use a yoga block. I mean, I use a lot of different things to do my workouts. So I have a lot of tips and tricks as a one-handed person. But when you look at the whole community, there's got to be so many different tips and tricks and things that you have learned about how to work out. No, we don't have to, it, we're not talking about how did you learn how to lift, a, you know, a, a Nissan pickup. <laughs> we're not talking, we're talking the type of workouts that help the mind, body, and soul. You know, you don't have to be a Paralympian to do workouts. You just have to be a person who wants to better themselves or continue on your path to recovery. 
That's the way I look at it. So I want you on the podcast. And what I hope, what I hope is that you're able to share through video some of your workouts and what you do. Because I'd love to learn. And I'd love the listeners of the We're Not Stumped podcast because we're not stumped. Well, maybe we are. We're not stumped. We need to know. We need to learn. We need to share. We need to we need to be we need to lead the pack as far as what we share and what we know and we want to know a real good community who helps others. This amputee community can be that. So let's do that. And then the last thing, like I said, then I'm gonna be done with my rant. I'm just throwing things now. Yeah. I want more guests. I want more family members. I want more prosthetists. I want people in the industry. I want more amputees. I want more stories. The reason why I want them is because I think they're worth sharing. Your story is worth sharing. You know, I get the impression sometimes that, you know, reading some of the magazines targeted to our community or maybe some of the websites, some of the major organizations and some of the people they highlight that some amputees think, well, my story, eh, you know, I'm just, you know, I just, you know, I don't, I don't do anything. You know, I, mean, I twiddle my thumb, you know, I, listen, I think those are the most important stories to get out there. And I, I'm getting, what I think is getting old is the, the story of, uh, this person, something, something happened to this person, and now they're excelling at this sport. It's like sports have to dominate. No, they don't. I was a pro bowler. I love sports. I've been on television to play basketball, my bowling, and my golf. So don't think I don't like sports. But you know what? A well-balanced life is not just about sports. But boy, you look at our amputee community, and that's the only, that's the only thing. If you're, you, you know, at, it's just too much. It's too much. Let's talk about real life. Let's talk about real stories. Let's talk about the other side to the amputation and what it t- what it takes to live live a balanced life and a full life. Let's talk about that. It's great that you can hike. Great. Maybe that that'll be part of the workout. I hike to work, but that if all you do is hike, then you know, I would think this, no matter how many limbs you have, all limbs, if, if, if all you do is hike, eh, I don't know if you really have a well-balanced life. I want that balance. I want your story. I want to know what steps you took to get to where you're at now. That's what I think will help others. And at the end of the day, that's what the whole theme of this We're Not Stump podcast is. That's why I left corporate America over a year ago to try to do things for this community to help. And now that I've got all these episodes in and talked to more amputees than I had the first X amount of years of my life within the last year and a half of my life, well, these are the things I'm starting to see. You know, I'm starting to see companies talk to amputees like that I'm the upper limb amputee. What you, who are you to talk to me like that? We got to be better. We got to come together. We got to hear your stories. So that's my time today, and I hope you enjoyed it. I'd love to hear some feedback on this. Like I said, if you want to, if you want to set up time to talk to me directly and not have a podcast episode, great. Go to We're Not Stumped and set up a Zoom call with me. You can, you can tell me I'm wrong on everything I just said. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to hear your perspective. If we don't hear these conversations, I'm going to continue to think like I do. But I could be missing something. I think in the case of being talked to like that as an amputee, I'm not. Because I have never let or appreciated anyone talking to me a certain way as an amputee. I will, and I will not start now. We have always respected and admired amputees without prosthetics. I, I, I can't respect a company that flat out lies to my face. Not one post, not one picture about someone without a prosthetic. 
for them to for them to thank me for engaging with the amputee. I'm going back to it. I apologize for for them to thank me for engaging in the amputee hashtag when I'm the amputee. I refuse to be talked to like that. I, I have no time for that company. None. That that that's just disgusting. You know, I talk, they care about upper limb amputees and then talk to an upper limb amputee like that. Oof. That's not the way to go. That's not the way to roll. So that's all the time I have today. I appreciate you listening to me and going over you know, what I've seen now. The season two finale. Season three is coming up. I already got a few guests lined up. Very excited about season three. Go to we're not stump.com. See all the stories. I got them in categories. Am I, am I missing a category? Am, do I have something miscategorized? I have upper limb. <laughs> speaking of upper limb amputee, that's my category. Upper, lower, medical, accidental, uh, prosthetists, and then general, general aid are the, are the one. That's off the top of my head. Let me know if I'm missing one. Let me know if there's a company that I should be talking to. Let me know if there's a person I should be talking to. It doesn't have to be you. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Let's get this conversation started so we can make this community stronger. Well, that's my time. This time I'm going to be truthful with this. That's my time with the We're Not Stuff podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Again, I did this one single-handedly. I certainly hope you don't mind. Thank you all for listening. Hosted by Mike Boland. If you want to be a guest on the program, reach out to Mike at his email address, mike at mikeboland.com. This podcast is produced by One Hand Man Productions. If you are looking to start your podcast, go to onehandmanproductions.com.